Hey YouTube, it's Richard with Through the Hay Survival. Uh, I'm back in my shed, and today I'm going to do a video over everyday carry. Uh, one of the reasons that this video came to mind was when I was doing that Air Force survival kit, uh, several of the items I was like, oh yeah, that'd be cool to put into a pouch to carry, you know, when I'm out and about. Uh, that can fit in a cargo pocket or, or even in the glove box of the car. Something to just have nearby so uh, I'm not, not without anything that I might need. Um, last time I was at the lean-to, I did break into my EDC kit and took out a band-aid because Nathan got a scratch on his finger. But uh, it's just some items to keep in mind uh, so that way you have maybe the five C's or at least the five C's on you at all times or accessible at all times. You know, some stuff, uh, depending on where you work, you know, if you work in an office building, you obviously can't carry, you know, a knife with you uh, depending on regulations and rules. Um, or maybe even a lighter, but uh, it's just something to uh, carry with you that you can carry with you that you have easy access to or quick access to, whether it's in your vehicle or maybe in a gym bag, um, some place where you can get to it, where it'll get you home or get you to more uh, resources or let you use the resources that are uh, close at hand. So we'll get into it and uh, I'll show you some things that I carry every day. Uh, a kit that I made up using the pieces from the uh, Air Force Survival Kit and then a kit that I keep uh, when I take longer trips anywhere that's more than 20 miles away from home, 20 to 50 miles away from home. Uh, basically like a get home bag. Uh, so let's dig into it. So first I wanted to start with this, uh, this belt pouch. This belt pouch is made by Hidden Woodsman or The Hidden Woodsman. Uh, really quality made equipment, quality made gear. He makes all kinds of um, pouches and bags and haversacks and rucksacks, all in this kind of uh, old school canvas style um, uh, with the, the nice buckles. It really eclectic look, really nice looking, uh, and really utilitarian, high quality. Uh, it's made by just one guy, I believe, and uh, he does a really high quality job. But this is the Hidden Woodsman belt pouch. Uh, got it pretty inexpensive from their website. Uh, I'll share their website down in the, the description. Uh, again, you're going to recognize some of these things because I use them, or they came out of the, the Air Force Survival Kit. So first, I have a knife in here. Now, I always carry a knife on me anyway, uh, but this is the, um, the Moore knife, the fire steel knife. Just a pretty short, sharp blade that has the uh, fire steel on the inside, the ferro rod. I have the cravat or triangular bandage that was in the survival kit. That little uh, match case with the matches and the striker and then another um, little ferro rod at the bottom. Uh, it's my belief that if you're going to carry something, if you're going to buy something, two is one, one is none. If you are using something and it breaks and you've only got one of those things, flashlight or a knife, then what are you going to do? But if you have two, well, then you have a backup. Uh, I've got some band-aids in here, again from that same kit. Uh, this is another mini survival kit from something else. It's just got some tweezers, it's got a pencil, some uh, fishing line, uh, and a few other things in there. Uh, it was part of another really cheap kit, and I was just like, well, I can throw it in here. It's got a little blade in there, too. Uh, it's something that you could just, you could really just stick that in your pocket, and you'd be okay. You wouldn't be good, well off, but you'd be okay. I don't want to pull everything out, because it'd take a while to get everything back in. That red light that was in the uh, Air Force Survival Kit, regular old Bic lighter, uh, some duct tape, just a, a small roll of duct tape, some of the, the wet fire, if I don't drop it, just two pieces, it's small, and then that uh, that Leatherman squirt, I just thought it was a really neat little piece of kit, you know, it's I've already, <laughs> already used it to pull some thorns out of my shoes when I was walking around, um, but I mean it's a little little knife that has many uses, pliers and all that, 
uh, and I just like that it's small and it's very versatile. So that all fit inside of this one Kitten Woodsman pouch. Uh, and if I took out the um, the Mora, then I could it would fold down and I could fit it in a cargo pocket. Uh, with the Mora in it, you know you can wear it off your hip. Uh, it looks a little inconspicuous, uh, depending on what you're doing. If you're out bushcrafting, it really doesn't matter. But um, if you're walking around town, then it, that's that's a makes you look weird. <laughs> uh, but according to my wife, anyway. Uh, but you could stick it in the center console of your car, or uh, stick it in a backpack. You know, it's it's ready to go. So all I have to do is grab it and stuff it in the glove compartment, or stuff it in a backpack, or make my wife carry it and stuff it in her purse. But uh, it's it's a neat little pouch. Again, he makes even different, even more pouches. Uh, so just keep that in mind. Um, also, on my keys, I have my work keys and my regular keys. Uh, on both sets, I have this Everstrike little lighter, kind of like a Zippo lighter, where it takes uh, it takes lighter fluid in the bottom, but it has an O-ring right here, so it seals it up, and it's got the wick and then a flint striker. And it's very small. I've, I have used this before. It's got a little clip. It's attached to my keys. I've got some 550 cord here. A friend of mine from church made this. Uh, and then I made this one. Um, but just a length of 550 cord. Again, I have the Everstrike. On my work keys, I also have the uh, can opener. I think it's the P38 can opener. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong down in the comments. Uh, and I've used this to open cans before. It does work pretty well. And I've got a whistle. Um, and then all my keys that just, I carry around for work. But that's something that I carry every day, you know, for because this if I'm not working, then I'm using my other car and I have something to light with. Uh, I also carry a, uh, this is a Cold Steel Recon Tanto, Recon 1 knife. You can see it's pretty beat up, pretty well used. I keep it pretty sharp. Uh, if you can, local laws uh, applying, of course, because I know that some countries you can't even carry a screwdriver. But um, carry a knife with you. It's something that you'll use to open up packages, open up mail, open up boxes, you know, maybe cut on your apple that you're eating for lunch. Um, it's You can never go wrong with carrying a knife. Uh, where it's legal. Just be mindful of where it's legal at. I also, in my wallet, it's a Texas size wallet, I carry a Fresno lens. This is one from Creek Stewart. Uh, and it works for, for starting fire. Um, of course, for a Fresno lens, everyone knows that you need sun to start a fire. So, uh, it's just another piece. It's the size of a credit card. It fits really easily down inside my wallet. So it's something that I, it's there. I can forget it and and know that I have another piece of kit. So now how about a kit to keep in your vehicle for when you're traveling away from the house? I'm going to pack up this other stuff and then we'll get into this, uh, this other kit that I carry with me in my work vehicle, especially every single day. And then anytime I travel, you know, over 50 miles from my house. So this is the same Camelback you've seen in several of my videos. It's the 3 liter HOG, H-A-W-G. Uh, it's got a lot of storage space in it, a lot of stuff in there. Um, and I carry it with me for work and anytime I go travel long distances I take it with me just because it's it's not a very big pack but it holds a lot and I can it holds water which is always a good thing and I can just toss it in the trunk and I know that I have enough for me and my family. Uh, it's got, I wouldn't really call them molly straps, they're kind of molly straps, but it's got little hook straps on the front. Uh, I just have my name tag and my um, my old blood type from when I was in the military. And I've got one of those IR uh, reflectors right there. But on it I've got a, a tourniquet and an, an IFAC, uh, individual first aid kit. Uh, it's got, you know, bandages in there and some shears and some, uh, uh, nitro gloves. Right here, there's a small pouch. Inside of the small pouch, I've got a uh, um, signal mirror 
my Swedish fire steel. I've got uh, the knife sharpener, waterproof matches, and then the Yuko stormproof matches. Like I said, two is one, one is none. I've got all kinds of ways of starting a fire in here. You saw the I have the, the fire steel, the two matches, I've got a big lighter, plus I always have a set of keys on me, so I've got that lighter as well. I've got some, uh, let's see, I've got a headlamp in here, a net gator, see a headlamp, net gator, I've got a little bit of food, some batteries, um, my uh, canvas needles in there, and some uh, water purification tablets, and then some cordage. I'm not going to pull every single thing out of here because we'd be here all day. And then in the first large pouch, I have my saw, I have my, uh, my bushcraft knife, the one that I, you always see me use, I have a Kephart knife, uh, this is the neck lanyard that I use for my bushcraft knife. I've got that Calium um, light stick, the, the IR one from the, the Air Force kit. I've got a magnifying glass back here. I've got those gardening shears. It's got extra pouches right here, pouches right here. Down in the bottom, I've got a whole bunch of 550 cord. It needs to be wrapped up. It, it came undone when I was using it. And then in the, the big pouch, got two different pairs of gloves. I got the lightweight and then the heavyweight gloves. A Shemog. I've got my, uh, similar to this one behind me, the reusable space blanket. I've got first aid kit and I took a lot of the items that were in the Air Force first aid kit, pretty much all of the items that were in the Air Force first aid kit and just put it in this one so it's more comprehensive and everything fits. So, And then even though this is a camelback for carrying water, Inside, I have a wide mouth clean canteen and a stainless steel cup. I really like this stainless steel cup because on the inside it has the, um, or on the outside, inside, whatever, has the ounce markers, uh, which helps out, like, especially if you're making mountain house meals and it says add 10 ounces of water. Well, I fill it up to the 10 ounce line and I don't have just right amount of water, not too much, not too little. And then again, principle, well, two is one, one is none. I have two knives up here, always one in my pocket. And then I have the controlled steel bushman, a big knife. Um, because, I mean, I can use this in place of an axe. Uh, it's, it's pretty heavy, heavy duty, heavy weight. Because um, I don't always carry an axe with me. And then on the back, is a separate pouch for the water bladder. Let's see where's the zipper? It's padded too. Both the kidney pads and then kind of shoulder blade pads. The um, shoulder straps are pretty wide. There's a couple tabs on here that you can hook your GPS on, whatever. And then the water bladder is inside. I'm not gonna pull it out. And it's got a pretty long hose. So uh, you're not going to be struggling to, to get it to you to drink. Um, if you can find, whether it's name brand Camelback or not, uh, a water bladder backpack for your kids, uh, I'd suggest it. Kids love drinking water from the straw, um, and they think it's cool because you know you carry water with you everywhere, and you can carry it on your back, and it's usually cold water because it's pretty well insulated. So. Uh, it's something, if we found some at uh, Sam's Club, which is a big box store here in the United States, for like 20 bucks, made by Coleman. Uh, backpacks, they had, I think, three different pouches and all kinds of stuff. Kid size with, you know, kid-friendly prints on them, and uh, our kids love them. You know, we, we travel quite a bit, so uh, just keep your eyes open for stuff like that. Um, and, and if you have kids, pick it up for them. If, if you can afford it, you know, of course.
So again, everyday carry is going to be something that you can carry on your person every day. Uh, stuff that will get you back to your bug out bag, back to your get home bag, back to your inch bag, your I'm not coming home bag. Um, because, you know, depending where you're at, certain cities, you know, you can't carry anything. Typically, I also carry a firearm. Uh, I always carry a firearm anytime I leave the house. Um, you know, not everywhere is allow allows firearms everywhere. Um, some places it's just in your home, some places it's just on your property, some places it's in your home in a locked box and you can't access it unless you're going to target shooting. So uh, just be mindful of that. Again, keep in mind your state laws, local laws, federal laws, whatever the case may be. Uh, but I would recommend at least carrying, you know, like a big lighter and a knife if you can. If you can. Um, a big lighter will this, you know, last 100 fires or more. I'm sure more, but uh, it's something you can slip in your pocket, and you have it. You know that you have one of your five C's covered. You have fire covered, uh, and fire is it's pretty hard to start if you don't have the materials really readily available. Whether it's for friction fire or doing a flint and steel, uh, it's not easy to go out and just find a piece of flint and then find something steel to strike it on, or find dry materials that you can use for uh, starting your friction fire. Um, Typically, anything that you use to start a friction fire, you've stored away and kept dry for a long time. Even the, the Native Americans, they had containers to put all of their fire kit in, so it would stay dry and stay out of the humidity as much as they can, because if that stuff gets wet, it's not going to be effective for a friction fire. So just keep the five C's in mind, you know, your cordage, combustion, cutting tool, something for cover, like this, uh, or a schmog, and then uh, a container, something to carry water in. That can be, you know, your Nalgene bottle that you use for working out, um, or the Clean Canteen. Something stainless steel is a lot better than something plastic. You know, even the, the Clean Canteen, no one's going to look at you twice for carrying around a stainless steel canteen for drinking water out of. It's not a strange thing, especially anymore where people are more health conscious and health minded. Uh, carrying water is, is always good. You, sh you should be drinking more water than anything else. But just keep the five C's in mind when you're building up your everyday carry. Um, try to at least have the five C's in there as much as you can, or have them readily available where you can get to them easily. You know, maybe you work in a building where you can bring certain things into the building, but they have to stay in a locker before you go to the office floor or whatever. Uh, I, I don't know. I don't like office work. That's why I work outside. But uh, just try to build up your kit. Share your um, any successes that you've had on the Facebook. Uh, it's open for anyone to comment on. Again, like, share, comment, and subscribe this video. Uh, check out our Facebook and our Instagram. Uh, I, I do post stuff, more stuff on the Instagram than I do on YouTube because it's easier. I can just take a picture with my phone or take a video with my phone and upload it right away. No editing or anything. And then it's right there. I don't, and I don't have to take my camera and hook it up to a computer and go through all those steps. So more stuff might show up on the Instagram than what is on the YouTube channel. So uh, just keep all that stuff in mind and come join me outdoors.